we're talking to you about your time in the force and your time as a woman on the force and the Metropolitan Police's attitude to women. Were you aware there was an attitude? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, no, is the, the honest answer. When I was in the police, I, I personally never experienced any of this. So for me, this is a complete and utter shock, as it is, of course, to the public. Um, I never experienced any of this. Um, Things have changed, of course. Um, we, we, you know, life, life moves on. But I, I, I'm mortified that this person was amongst us and was one of us. You know, I, I wore my uniform with absolute pride, and I do not believe that this person should have ever even been in the police. Talk us through what the recourse is for those people who took the calls from these women. I presume they were all women and didn't do anything about it because multiple calls were made to the police and it wasn't followed up. Do they get in trouble? Who gets in trouble for this? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, every, there's a lot of blame to be, to, be, to be spread out here. It's not just one individual, is it? It's the whole, the whole uh, the team that worked, like you say, the call. Then who was that passed to? Who was then dealing with that? Like, what, why did nobody pick this up and go, Hang on, this is not right. We should not have this person with us. Um, there's a lot. To, there's a lot of uh, answers owed, um, and I, I believe, from when I was in the police, that there are some people that should be should be punished. It should be from the start to the finish. This is not acceptable. You know, I would always like to say wouldn't have happened in my day, and I, of course, he would have been in the police in my day, um, and maybe these things weren't spoken about then, but. Um, yes, absolutely. He, the people that took the call should have been blamed for this. Talking about speaking about such things, uh, the danger with all of this, Danny, is it not, that a lot of women will not feel comfortable in reporting uh, incidents to the police and, you know, perhaps um, perhaps they're not taking these, these reports, uh, would be taken as seriously by police because of staffing for instance, I don't. I don't know. How, how do you see the conundrum? Yeah, I, th I mean, as you mentioned there about women not wanting to report crimes to police, that makes me very sad. I, I, I promise you, there are more good cops than bad cops. I know way more good cops than bad cops. We do take this very seriously. I certainly would have taken it seriously. I know my colleagues would have taken it seriously. I really hope we can get it back that women, everybody in particular women, can feel comfortable in reporting crime again to police and know that it will be taken seriously. I do believe there's a major, major issue with recruitment. You know, we had, we had a, a, a period in the police where you could join the police by passing a degree with no policing experience. That's not what we need. You need to start as a, as a constable, work your way up if you want to. You don't have to, of course, there's many cops I know that spent 30 years as a, as a frontline officer. Um, but there's a huge issue we have here with recruitment. You need experience. You need to have the trust of your colleagues. You, need, you know, the, the bottom line here is recruitment. And I do have to say that I do believe our new uh, Assistant Commissioner, uh, Dame Lynn Owens, will be very good. I think she's going to make a lot of differences. I know she's keen and I know she's got vast experience. I know she's respected. I think she is the right person for the job in, in helping try to get to get our police force back to the best in the world.